Hi there, and welcome to the Jamf Breakfast Club. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Lawrence. I'm an education leadership executive here at Jamf, former teacher and Apple Distinguished Educator, and I'm joined by... Andrea Glick. So I am your K-12 field sales manager for Jamf. Fantastic. And the Jamf Breakfast Club, if you haven't seen us before, we work with schools to talk about a variety of topics, including classroom management, remote learning, and some of the best apps to enable student learning. We welcome all educators to the show. And today we're super excited to welcome Chuck Langston. So Chuck, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Chuck Langston. I am Director of Technology for Gordon County Schools, Apple Distinguished Educator, and Lifelong Learner. And thank you so much. We are very excited to have you here today. You know, part of the reason why we're doing this series is to be able to connect the stories to educators of why Jamf in the classroom and also in the IT environment. You know, I was hoping, Chuck, can you give us a little bit of background and maybe even some of the pre-work that you did at Gordon County and what that looked like so that way you can show us how you were able to execute this deployment so quickly. Absolutely. We started with, um, in 2017, with a one-to-one -one deployment and the going into that, we thought of how we were going to shape what we were doing. We looked at, you know, the, the, not only the device management side of things, but we were also looking at the professional learning side of things. We were looking at the, you know, how our teachers were going to react and, and what we were going to do and how we were going to work those workflows for them. So, you know, and I was at that point, I, I was coming into it from a teacher's perspective. I started out in the classroom and uh, did some of the uh, early onboarding, like training videos for our one-to-one -one deployment. And a, as we moved into the, the, the actual deployment, we uh, I transitioned into the tech department with the instructional technology side of things. And uh, I've found myself in the last uh, couple of years in the director seat uh, for the technology department and managing all of that. And now we've just gone through this newest refresh and a new deployment of devices. And like I, you know, like you said, our our um, workflows for that were really uh, the the reason that we were able to get things out so quickly. We we pulled in seven thousand plus devices and, and deployed 7,000 plus devices in the span of probably a month. Uh, and that was, um, that was, uh, something we did with, I think we have eight tech workers, uh, currently including our instructional technology coordinator. So it was, you know, kind of a skeleton crew that we were able to pull together and, and, and get that stuff out there. But, you know, we, we're thankful every day for the workflows that, that, Jamf has provided us, but, you know, trying to, as, as we try and l look at those and, and make sure that things were right, we were able to not have to restart from the beginning. It wasn't like a, a fresh start. It, we, we could build on what we already had and we could go back to the drawing board and, and revamp some of the, the current practices we had and, and be able to, to shape those profiles and those those things that were going out so knowing knowing what was going where was really important and making sure that we had the right apps with the right students with the right teachers you know in the right spots and and it was one of those things where we handed the teachers the device we handed the students the device and they log in and it's there that you know and you can't ask for more than that that's that's really like like I said, the dream when it comes to deploying devices, you don't want to have to go back and put your hands on every, you know, thousands of devices and, and, and do that. You know, that no touch deployment seems to be for, for us, just kind of a dream come true. Really. I, you know, that it's harder, harder to find a, it's hard to find a better phrase than that as, as far as that goes, you know, we, um, as we, as we looked at those profiles, you know, and, and things, you know, the, the user interface makes it easy to adjust things. The, what we were doing on just the deployment side was there, but not only that, you know, it, it helps with the, with the workflows being so simple. It helps for me to explain it to our teachers because really it's, um, it, if they don't understand what's going on, they don't understand the purpose in it. 
if you can't get the buy-in from your teachers, then you're you're not going to have a successful deployment. So we, we really wanted to make sure that what we were doing was understood by the teachers. Uh, and, and not only on on that, we're, you know, we're implementing ways that some of our teachers and some of the people in the buildings can actually um, participate in some of that uh, deployment, you know, whether it be distribution of apps or, or um, you know, uh, finding uh, lost devices, you know, uh, things like that, maintaining inventory, you know, pieces like that kind of help us in the long run, for sure. That sounds fantastic. And I like that a dream deployment. Uh, and actually, you started getting into the nitty gritty there. And so what I wanted to ask you is, how did uh, Jamf School and how does Jamf School and the uh, education apps like Jamf Teacher, Student and Parent, uh, and more recently, if you if you can talk about Jamf Connect, how did that support your district's mission built on that foundation that you just described? How did how did all those apps help with your district? Oh, absolutely. Uh, now this is like you said, this is the this is the meat of of for me what I've seen the the positive impact of what we were doing. You know, I you know there are a few things that happen in our um, lives that we get a lot a lot of direct feedback for. Uh, but if something if we can't get Jamp teacher out to these teachers quick enough, then I hear it on <laughs> like at the beginning of the school year. If it's not if it's not available, ready to go, you know, day day one, what what's going on and, and you know if we can figure the way we can figure our classes with um Apple School Manager and things like that. Sometimes it takes a little bit for SIS to feed into things and, and some of those things. So if it's not a morning of the first day, you know, where's, you know, sometimes it's pre-planning, where, where is this at? So, and, and those are from teachers. Uh, for me, I, I know the, the teacher that I'm thinking of right now was one of those teachers that was a hard sell at the beginning of our deployment, was uh, very much someone who was kind of, um, butting heads with technology and butting heads with using it in uh you know like a high school math class it was you know it is a hard sell in, in those places but but at this point it's you know i have to be able to and it's not necessarily about control it's more about the the workflow management it's it's about you know how our teachers are are managing uh devices in the classroom uh you know, it's not to the scope of what we see on a full scale management piece, but but knowing the kids are in the right app, knowing the kids are 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 focused on on the things that they need to be focused on, or getting rid of those distractions. Uh, you know, the 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 fact that it will, you know, Jamf teacher will will pull in conjunction with Jamf student the things that that clutter. You know some of our students' uh, workspaces, you know, we, we, some of them have, you know, you know, numerous apps that, that just kind of can get in the way and can get distracting and, and it doesn't take it away from the device, but it does give a, a time frame where they can work and they can actually, you know, work and distract, it, especially with our, our students with that have you know specific needs and 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 things. It it really shapes the classroom in a much more productive manner. Um, uh, for us, you know, the uh, for me and our instructional technology coordinator, app distribution is um, if it can be a nightmare um, on the on the opposite side of the dream that we were talking about earlier. It, it can be a nightmare, but Jamf uh, has the the workflow there has been so streamlined, and mm -hmm. just you know the teachers go in, they request the app, it pops up on our end. We look at it. If we've got the privacy policy on hand, we know it is appropriate for the grade level for the for the students. You know, we talk with our curriculum department, and we pull the trigger, and it is there. It's on that iPad, and not only that. If that student breaks their iPad, if that student, you know, has uh, has, you know, we we have a million different things happen in the field where something goes wrong, we have to get them a replacement. As soon as that kid logs into the new device, it's there. The, those apps are there. It's they're they're not losing any learning. Uh, there's there's no learning loss in that. 
in that exchange, you know, as soon as we can get them a new device, all, all the tools they need are available. So, you know, as we, as we've pushed through that, our, our district's mission kind of is as far as technology goes with us is to make sure that it is a support. It is a tool that, that drives learning forward and doesn't get in the way of what's happening with learning. So that to me has been our way for those things to support what's going on. Jamp Connect on, on our end, you know, we tried many other products that were open source that were, you know, were, were different ways of authentication when it, when it came to new devices for teachers, especially labs, things like that. And uh, Jamp Connect, you know, went, those other pieces that we tried were um, a lot of work to say the least. Um, Champ Connect is not, it is literally, we don't, it's one of those things we don't have to worry about once it's on there. It authenticates, it pulls right from our Active Directory instance, it, you know, and it works so well with, with everything that we're doing that, that, you know, if I can simplify, and I came into that, the director position, here, knowing that if I could simplify our workflows and if I could simplify the things that we were doing uh, as a technology department, it helped us to, um, again, move technology out of the way and be there as a support to push learning forward because, you know, that that is what we're here for. That's what we're in the business of is to ensure that our students are learning to ensure that nothing is distracting from from what they're doing. Uh, in the classroom, and and that has been, uh, you know, a, uh, a goal of mine. It's been um, a goal of our tech department. You know, it's one of those things as, as we, we look at what are, our, what are our steps moving forward, how do we align with our district plan, our, our strategic plan, and that mm -hmm. is it for me. We, we move, move technology from being an obstacle to, to being a support, and, and for me, that, that has been our our, our way to, to move forward with our mission and make sure that we're doing and we're getting, you know, as a, as a tech department, you know, we get, we, there's very little um, uh, in, in that world, there's very little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's very little uh, edification when you're doing things from an external source. Um, so to, to be able to hear that and to be able for that to uh, come forward from our teachers, hey, you, you know, you guys are doing a great job, not necessarily mm -hmm. to me, but to my workers and to our instructional technology department. It lets me know that we're making steps in the right direction. We might not be where we want to be yet, but we are definitely making those steps in the right direction. Do you know what I love about that story is that you've really, you actually kind of, you've teed up a lot of things here. Um, one, I want to say congrats, you know, this sounds, this is the dream, right, is to simplify IT, to enable end users to do their best work. And really, that's the whole message around Apple. Um, something that, of course, the best laid plans can always go awry. Whenever you are thinking about those plans and making the workflows that you have for your team, what were some of the hurdles that you guys identified early or you, your team identified early? when working with staff or with working with the deployment, what were, or maybe some of the obstacles that you didn't foresee that came up. Can you kind of touch on those two things for us? You know, for us, uh, the, the, uh, the unknown is, is a big, a big factor. You know, we, we walked into uh, a deployment and our first, first instance, we really didn't know what to expect. We came in kind of knowing what to expect from, uh, from staff, from students, and in, in, in different uh, facets, but but did not. Um, there were a lot of things we just didn't anticipate. You know, things come at you. The the ease of being able to move quickly and pivot in in a way that um, Champ has allowed us to do. You know, if if something you know goes awry with our content filter, you know, if something goes awry with with another uh, piece that we implement because all of it kind of routes through our management platform there to the devices we we can get a grasp on it we can get in touch with support and we can make sure that those 
those pieces are kind of corrected and 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 moved into a a better you know a better management style and piece you know uh, so as we look at those things you know we 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 have our weekly meetings and come in and say all right what are, what are we looking at now what what pops up what what's new this week that has you know if it's printers if it is the content filter if it is something else if it's one of those things that all it you know being able to push out a profile being able to to, to run a script that that pushes to all those devices at once and, and corrects an entire group and you know we're we're becoming for us you know one thing that we didn't think about was kind of um, being more um, segmented with our groups in, inside of it. We kind of had these broad spectrum groups when we first started and, and moved into whether they be, you know, user groups, class groups. We had, we had these, these broad uh, kind of groups and we were able to kind of um, parcel those out into different things and let us be able to control it a little bit more. So if something went wrong, we could, narrow it down to the specific, you know, group that was having the issue, the specific, uh, uh, you know, type of um, response. It, it made our response time a lot quicker. Uh, it made us a little bit more um, thoughtful. We, we've been able to run, uh, you know, Champ does allow us to run beta uh, software mm -hmm. on, uh, on uh, devices now. So we have a specific profile with a specific group that allows our, um, that allows our uh, us to have a small fleet of devices on on a beta, so we can look at what's coming down the pipe, whether it be you know testing, you know, because you know, testing is another thing that's that's just another beast altogether. We don't know, we don't know how things are going to respond. I don't know how the testing company is going to respond to the new software update. So things like that have have allowed us to to step back and say, look, let's look at look at how it responds on our test group and if we see problems we can communicate that with apple we can communicate that with our uh testing agency you know it gives us the ability to have those conversations ahead of time you know whereas you know we, we wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have that that preview the the things that we could see coming forward you know and and uh, allows us to prep a little bit more uh you know, uh, as far as working with staff, you know, we see uh, things that that we know they're going to struggle with. You know, we can we can look at it and say, all right, you know, we, we get feedback from them quite often. And, and they kind of give us, you know, we have a Vanguard teacher group and we have some of these news pieces that will, uh, you know, some some groups that will actually come back and, and communicate with us and, and give us some feedback so we can look at it and say, what are you having struggles with? What are you having the biggest issue with? And we can sit down, we can, as a tech department, look at those uh, pieces. You know, I can look at whether my instructional technology department, I can say, how how are we going to attack this? How are we going to approach this? So we, we sit down, we, we come back and, you know, it's always, I, I think we're humanizing us as much as we can and humanizing technology as much as we can. I think for too long our, our tech department had become this you know put in a ticket and hope something comes of it you know in the in the near future and and that uh you know that became problematic for a lot of teachers because they felt like they weren't getting you know support they felt like they weren't getting things so we changed to some in-person you know uh uh communication and and you know direct face-to-face -face communication maybe virtually or, or you know uh, in room, you know, face to face in the room, but we we've been able to get more feedback and and become part of a bigger community and a broader community at each school and uh, try and make sure that we're listening to that, you know, because I think that's where classroom instruction drives what we're doing. So if we're if we're seeing something that that causes a problem or we're seeing something that is a, a stumbling block in the way of what we're doing, then it gives us the ability to, you know, we, we might not be able to fix it immediately, but we can at least start the process and, and communication is key. So we're able to give that communication to those teachers, you know, there, you know, and there's you know, just, you know, so much, you know, get, putting power in their hands, you know, was a big ask uh, for the for for one of our things, you know, for them to be able to just let us. A lot of it was just let us help, 
you know, the teachers were like, Hey, just, just let us help with this. Just let us do this. And like I said, I think in our, the previous statement there, you know, I think champ teacher and champ student has allowed them to have some, some stake in that and some ownership in, in, in pieces of, of that. And sometimes it's just ownership in trying to get to the answer. You know, it's not necessarily finding the answer. It's, it's, it's showing that we're part of a constructive team that's working towards that answer. I think. Love that. I heard you say that uh, the team had to really learn to adapt and really become a nimble agency to be able to respond to those unforeseen challenges that you didn't anticipate. And uh, then you taught you you pivoted and you talked about how that also played a role in listening to the teachers, listening to the customers, and seeing them as your end users. Um, but you know, this is called the Jamf Breakfast Club. So we have a couple of fun questions that we want to ask you as well. And uh, uh, Andrea, do you want to start off or shall I? Uh, this is a Jamf Breakfast Club, so. I mean, okay. I always have to start with a good breakfast. So talking about the Jamf Breakfast Club, tell me, you know, what is your favorite go-to breakfast food? What do, what do you have to have in the morning? Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, I... Uh, I would I would probably want to say something, you know, kind of mundane like eggs, but my little girl loves pancakes. Uh, it is one of those things where my my Father's Day gift last year was a griddle. So we could we could make our own pancakes and I wanted to try drawing pancakes. I'd seen it on on TikTok or whatever. And I was like, I think I could do that. So We've made a, a several, you know, Olaf pancakes and different things that, that came up, you know, characters from different, uh, from different things that we've been able to go in and create those uh, uh, memories is nice. And I think that ties more to, to being able to, to have the memory and, and have the, the fun uh, than, than just the food itself. So that, that probably holds a special place for me as pancakes. Uh, Breakfast. You know, color me impressed because like, I will say real quick is that I cannot make any of those shapes or designs. <laughs> Mine is just always the big pancake and the kids are lucky if it doesn't <laughs> fall apart at some point. So kudos to you. I'm so glad to hear that. And Mike, I'll hand it over to you. Yes. Well, I mean, I, breakfast is the most, most important meal of the day, but we also want to know because it's, you know, a classic 80s movie. That we share our name with what is your yes. go-to classic movie what do you sit down and watch when you have time such a, this is such a, a a difficult task uh that's a that's a, that's a hard question you're allowed more yeah. than one i have i know time. i i'm gonna have we, to yeah go ahead we, oh no i was gonna say we did chat about this earlier you can have different classifications yeah. there's different justifications for a favorite movie so yeah I'm going to have to go with, um, I, I definitely, you know, the, the, I'm a big comic book nerd, uh, is my, you know, one of my, uh, um, big things. So, uh, Captain America is a huge, I have a full size Captain America shield and, and, and everything, you know, so any Captain America movie, the Avengers movies, they're all, all big with me, but, uh, you know, there, there's so many, so many movies it, it's hard to say you know I, I could I could probably pick a, a million different movies from from a million different things you know some we're gonna get real introspective something like Big Fish you know if I were gonna get you know uh uh like I said fun I'd do the Marvel movies if I were you know you get serious <laughs> there's all I, I mean it's so hard to pick but but I'll, I'll go with Marvel movies uh, any insert insert random Marvel movie here but that that tends to be my uh, my go to, you know. If it, if it's on, I'll watch it, and if it is something that that's new that's available, I'll watch it. But you know, Captain America is my my uh, my go to hero there. Well, and it seems like you know you could do this all day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I had to I had to pull the quotable line from Captain America. Yes, yes, of course. No, that's fantastic. Uh, well, it's been great to hear your story, to learn more about Gordon County and the amazing work that you do. And of course, your favorite breakfast and go-to classic movie. Yes. As is required on the Jamf Breakfast Club. Yes. 
but I uh, want to thank you for that. I want to thank you, Andrea, and uh, our other co-hosts. We just take turns, the four of us. So this has been a fabulous partnership. And uh, we look forward to our next Champ Breakfast Club. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person again. Uh, Chuck, thank you again. Yes. Thank you. And I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.